What's going on, everyone? My name is Boyd, and I'm back with some more Age of Empires 4 action, spawning on the left side of the map in the blue color, playing as uh, the Abbasid Dynasty. His name is the Chapster. He is El Chaparino. His opponent today in the red color, playing as the Chinese. His name is Ozzy Drongo. We just watched him play against Hut with a tough tough loss there as Hutt's micro was just so insanely good and was able to take that W there uh, but we're moving into another game chasing Aussie Drongo around we'll watch one more game uh, and then maybe go back into some ranked ourselves uh, but we'll see how this is going to go we're going to go Drongo did post a build order of China on day one of the beta he released a build order for the fast castle you get the fast castle on a land map uh, in I think it's 7.30 was the time that you hit the castle edge and you start making lances straight away. Now, personally, uh, in my experience thus far, uh, the fast castle will lose to a fast second town center. So if your opponent scouts you doing this, they go fast second town center, they can go to the rollwork edge uh, about a minute or a minute and a half later than you, and then they can chase your tech, have more economy than you, and build and out and outbuild you, outboom you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll see exactly what's going to happen here. We do have the Abbasid Dynasty here, so the fast castle from the Chinese also not as strong because of those camel archers, because they're going to be able, or just because of the camels. The camels do have a debuff effect on your opponent's units, uh, specifically the opponent's cavalry, which reduces their damage by 20%, which is kind of gigantic. Uh, I think it's, I mean, if your unit does 10 damage, now it does 8 damage. So we'll see. We'll see how this is going to go. We see the goats all returning home here for the Chapster. I don't know anything about the Chapster. Um, he's got a cool name, uh, and his build is looking relatively clean here. So this should be a decent game. We do see a very, very early Lumber Camp, which um, I, I'm not... I'm not exactly a fan of it. Slows your your dark uh, your feudal age down uh, by by a, a substantial margin, uh, and your any any wood that you would have gathered here uh, you could have gathered earlier um, by moving villagers off of food over onto wood, and you just get a faster um, faster age up. Now we will be seeing the survival techniques coming through for Ozzy Drongo. Now Ozzy Drongo is big fan of getting his technologies early, uh, and. I see this as a interesting, um, an interesting try here in this game instead of just rushing town centers. And the question is, is it worth it or not? Obviously, for one town center fast castle play, this is the way to go. But if if I'm correct, and I think I am, that fast two town center um, uh, semi. Oh God, let's what's happening here? Let me pause. If I'm correct, and a fast two town center. Uh, then follow that by reacting to your opponent is the way to go, then uh, then maybe this is going to be a, a dead build, unfortunately, at the high levels. Uh, but I am interested in seeing what Ozzy Drongo is going to actually go for with this fast castle, if he's indeed going for a fast castle uh, or not. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Chapster here is getting his mining camp up putting the uh, stone onto this location here, ready to get his second town center. Exactly what he is doing seems to be a fast uh, a fast second town center. This is giving it away by getting onto the stone here. Now, the question is, what's Ozzy Drongo seeing with his scout? He needs to go and scout his opponent out and, and react to that. And the same thing here for Chaps. You can see exactly what Chaps are doing. He's moving in, checking out the, uh, the town center. He spots the berries here. He's taking a lot of damage from the town center. The Chinese town center does a ton of damage against units. It does 20 five damage and we're seeing the bar barbican of the sun going down now for Ozzy Drongo with only one villager no need to rush this one up against the Abbasid dynasty they're a little bit of a slow rushing sieve so you don't have to get it up too quickly no real worry that it's going to get taken down or killed or anything like that uh so uh just take your time getting this one up it's going to be completely fine uh we don't see any other text getting researched apart well still no wheelbarrow for um for Ozzy Drongo I'm a bit surprised I thought Wheelbarrow was a must, but maybe Wheelbarrow is later, like now? Not 100% sure when he gets the Wheelbarrow, if he, or if he gets the Wheelbarrow. But he has a lot of villages now on gold, lots of villages on food. Uh, and we'll be moving over here to uh, the Chapstar, who has his second town center very, very soon. Uh, with his six villages on wood and almost 300 gold here in the bank. Sorry, stone in the bank. And then as soon as you get... As basically, what you need to do is you check the uh, the stone outcropping here and you look at the bottom left of the screen. You see how much stone is here. 
uh, and you can just chuck up your uh, your mill over here, or not your your mill, your town center over here on top of the hunt, and then instantly start eating those. We do see that Aussie Dongo will be spotting the stone getting grabbed. We'll see that Chapster will be able to throw up his town center straight away. Not see any military buildings, so he knows what to expect here. Uh, but the thing here, the thing is here that if you go for fresh foodstuffs, if you go for um, the fast uh, the fast, the economic wing into fresh food stuffs and get a second town center, you'll be able to produce so ridiculously quickly. And we're seeing the villagers move forward, chucking up the town center on top of the gold mine. Doesn't want to get pushed off this gold mine for one reason or another. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's because he wants to make camel arches here in this game uh, in order to defend against the uh, Drongo's potential um, Lancer shenanigans. Uh, so we'll see how that's going to go in this uh, in this game. But just a little bit of uh, the lull before the storm, uh, which is one of the best things about the Age of Empires series, honestly, is that you get all of this time to just kind of ease into the game. Every single game you get to ease into the game. No need to just like one minute in and you're already getting probe harassed, you know? That's... um. That's the, the, fun, the fun part about this game, at the very least, uh, is, is that it, it, it's sort of, as the game progresses, it gets more and more intense. Uh, so, <laughs> just living the dream, basically. Uh, and let me see the villagers doing all of their good stuff. The, the uh, wood villagers dropping off their lumber, into their lumber camp. And we'll see how this is all going to go now. For the Chapster, as his town center's up, Fresh Food Stuffs is out. 25 food villages. That's what Fresh Food Stuffs gives. 25 food villages. Absolutely insane. So for every one villager that Aussie Drongo gets, Chapster gets two. So this is just going to be economic powerhouse from Chapster. Chapster going to decide what he wants to do now. Get economic upgrades. Get military units. Go Heroic Age. Those are his options here. Um... We are going to be seeing an immediate archery range. He is wanting to get those camel archers quite, quite clearly. He's got uh, lots of villages on wood. Only five villages on food for the time being. Lots of villages on gold, though, for some reason. I'm not 100% sure what the gold is for, um, if not for the, the broad axe. Okay, and, and this is something that players are going to learn as the game goes on, as, as more and more uh, strong players are playing this one. But whenever you have to be really, really active here, and that's exactly what Chaps is doing. You've got to be super active with your lumber camps because they, they the villages, they're very, very, uh, very, very naughty. Very, very naughty villages. You have to chuck these lumber camps down and make sure your villages continue to be efficient here. There's the Imperial Palace coming down now for... Uh, for Aussie Drongo, this gives him the unique ability to have map hacks. Now, you guys thought that Odin Ravens were map hacks, but no, no. You literally get map hacks. You right click, oh, sorry, left click on Imperial Spice and you see every single villager your opponent has exactly where you need to attack him. And now we see the barracks is up now for Aussie Drongo. He's making his palace guards here. Wants to make those palace guards. They're very, very similar to the men-at-arms. They move faster than the men-at-arms, but with reduced armor. They're counted by crossbowmen, knights, knights, and lancers. And these are very, very interesting units. We're seeing double military barracks here, actually, for Aussie Drongo. But the question is, how fast do they actually move? 1.38 tiles per second compared to the camel archer, which I'm not going to be able to see until he actually builds something. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Chapster can make crossbowmen already in the uh, in the feudal age. Chapster can make crossbowmen. If he scouts out that men, men at arms are coming, then Chapster can just mass uh, mass these crossbowmen, and these these uh, these palace guards will absolutely melt here. So we'll see if Chapster's going to notice this. We do see an immediate fitted leather work coming out now for Aussie Drongo. Uh, maybe expecting to see uh, some sort of melee units, but right now we've got the archery rangers getting built a second one and we see the first camel archer coming out. So not going in for those crossbowmen. Um, maybe maybe he hasn't quite scouted out just yet what's going on. Let's check out what he's seen in the base. He's, he does spot one of those barracks, but he hasn't spotted the men at arms. And maybe it's a little bit early days and he doesn't realize he should be making those uh, those crossbowmen in this situation. Or maybe I'm telling a lie and he can't build crossbowmen? 
No. Oh no, hold on. He can't build crossbowmen. I'm I'm a I'm a goober. Drongo can build crossbowmen. Drongo can build crossbowmen. But we are going to be seeing chaps now. We're going to be able to go to the uh, castle age, uh, and this is basically what I was talking about. Drongo was on a timer here. One town center fast castle gets countered by two town center fast castle because you simply put the amount of pressure you can put onto your opponent. Is it enough? Is it fast enough? That's what we're going to see in this game. This is going to be a really good tester here for the Chapster's economic builds here and for Aussie Drongo's fast castle age. And we'll see what's going to go. He's getting all of his techs here. Wedge rivets as well, getting both of his armor techs straight away. We see the scout popping out here, checking out what's going on. We see uh, Chapster's uh, scout moving in, going to start dueling here. I think, uh, I think the... No, they're, they're exactly the same unit. Exactly the same unit. And now we see the Camel Archer going to come in and try and snipe down the uh, the scout of Aussie Drongo as uh, as Chaps' scout going to be just retreating back into the home base here. And we'll see how this is going to go. I'll tell you, as one, as one thing that I would like to see in the observer situation here is uh, a both players line of sight. Because I would rather not, I would rather hit reveal map selected player and select both the players than have all of the map revealed. Do you know what I mean? That's what I would rather. And then maybe they could have player one over here and player two over here or something in terms of the resources. Or maybe player one, uh, or d maybe down here, player one, player two, et cetera, et cetera, in terms of their resources when you select both of them. But we'll, we'll see if some sort of changes that do happen. We do see Drongo still gathering the food. I am really interested in what the total resources are. If we check out the income per minute, we can see that the food situation is heavily in favor of Chapster here and the wood situation. It's only the gold that is currently in favor for Drongo. But we'll see exactly what's going to happen. Still making those... Uh, those men at arms still thinking about pushing forward. Chapster does hit the second age here. And the question is, is he going to start building those uh, crossbowmen now that he's in the castle age or not? Uh, he can just move forward, make sure that he's checking out what's happening here as the uh, men at arms starting to move forward, sneaking around the side. Absolutely love this play from Drongo. This is perfect. If he can sneak around the side and get up a battering ram or something, move around here, he can surprise the, the absolute crap out of Chapster, take down the buildings and just win the game. Just win the game here. We'll see if he can do that. We see the scout spotting these units and Ozzy Drongo's realize he's got past with his own uh, his own kind of movement here, uses, utilizing these guards. But we'll see if he can come in and take this down. If you're defending this, we are seeing the, uh, the outpost coming in. They're not going to do all too much to the men at arms. But if you're trying to defend this as... Uh, as the two town center player, um, just remember you can repair very quickly. And we'll see what's going to happen. We see the scout coming over here. Not going to spot these units just yet. We see the uh, military in the middle, chilling just for the time being. Ozzy Drongo is still making his men at arms here. Houses not up just yet. We see the lumber camp coming down. More houses coming out for Drongo as he is really ready to start pushing. We see the battering ram over here. Oh. And Chapster knows. How does Chapster know? How does he know? I, he must have spotted him go over there. He must have spotted him. And we see the uh, battering ram coming up in the front here. As Drongo is saying, I'm going all in. I'm going all in here. And honestly, Chaps just got no counter to a battering ram. He's got no melee units, just the villagers. Just the villagers here. And and the problem here for Drongo is he needs a battering ram for these uh, specific units here so he can just walk in. If he could build a battering ram over here, he could put all of his units inside the battering ram and then just move in with these units and he'll be completely fine. We see Drongo pushing in both fronts over here. The camel archers on Chapster's front here getting sniped and the archery rangers coming down over here getting picked off very, very quickly. We see the army of Drongo pushing in on the back, back front here as the uh, forward is happening. We see this... Uh, 
This man at arm here just going to construct this battering. I'm going to take a very long time to do so. Coming, pushing off the stone over here. What are these men at arms doing here? We see the chaps are trying to micro his camel arches as best as he can. But the uh, men at arms in the base of Chapster right now doing tons of damage to everything. We see the uh, the portable battering ram leaving the fire damage there to finish this one off nice play there from drongo pushing and trying to take down more of these camel archers very hard to defend we see a keep coming up in the main base here of chapter trying to stay alive with this keep we'll see if it's going to be able to do it the men at arms on top of these villagers here doing tons of damage but they are getting picked off slowly but surely as we see some more battering rams coming up for Chapster. Now we're starting to, sorry, for Drongo. Now we're starting to see some spearmen coming out as well, or just a random spearman here, maybe to get the, the, the battering ram coming out a bit faster. Uh, but the question is, is the keep going to be enough to defend this location? The other question is, does it even matter? Doesn't even matter. Drongo could just all in this town center, the landmark, and the other town center, and just take the victory here. We are going to be seeing the rams retreating away for the time being, as it's looking like Chapster has maybe too much population, 68 population to Drongo's 72 population, so it's actually still really, really close. Uh, and the thing is here, just get these men at arms and put them inside the battering ramp. That's all you have to do, because that protects them. Look at the damage that these, these archers do. Next to nothing. Next to nothing. The villagers get the, the torch damage, though, so you've got to be careful with these villagers here. You see the battering ram coming after the keep. How much damage does this do though? It does 200 damage a shot. So it will eventually take this one down. We see the army here coming in for Drongo yet again. But Chapster chasing them down with those camel archers. And this is very, very tense here. If Drongo makes the right the right call here, he might be able to just finish this game. But we are seeing the villagers coming in to take down these battering rams. There's no more archery ranges right now for Chapster, actually. Uh, if we check out Chapster's economy, very short on the wood. He needs to rebuild those buildings. He is chucking them down in the back of his base. Over here, we see the battering ram getting taken down. Drongo needs to move away from his, uh, his, his, what do you call it? Men at arms, his palace guards, and in favor of something else, we are seeing those archers. And yet again, we need to see, or we're going to see him go for the sacred site potentially, but we need to see siege weapons here. Siege weapons for Ozzy Dongo, getting out those mangonels. Super, super important to get the mangonels out against these cam cam camel archers, because they are that. They are just that, camel archers. They are not cavalry. You can take them down with those mangonels very, very nicely. So we're going to see the... Uh, the men at arms or palace guards moving around the side of the map looking for someone to take down. The uh, the monk possibly going to come over here, grab this relic here, grab the uh, sacred site and attempt to uh, take this game by, uh, by a different type of victory. We'll see how that's going to go. We do see these men at arms swinging around the side, going to be looking to take down some villagers here. He might be aware that there's something going on there. You see the archery range getting taken down. The villagers getting pulled off of the farms over here to try and take these battering ram out. Look at the damage it does, though. Absolutely insane. But the villagers also do an insane amount of damage to the battering ram with, the, with their torches. Right now, we see the camel archers coming in. I'm pretty sure that the uh, the archers here for Drongo win this one if he micros it. He needs to pull back micro. You have to pull back micro. Otherwise, the archers, I think, start using their knives or something. But it's looking like Drongo's not quite able to win this fight. But he does trade efficiently, though. That's the thing. He trades very very efficiently in this location with those arches and it's looking like the numbers from chapstar starting to dwindle just a little bit we see these men at arms over here they're not attacking the villagers for some reason very very peculiar but it is looking like chapstar does manage to take these arches down of aussie drongo chapstar moving in with his camel arches doing some big big damage here and i'm not sure exactly what uh, Drongo can do. He's got a lot of resources in the bank to make some more of these uh, these palace guards. But the problem is you can't garrison. I don't think you can garrison into your buildings. Right now, that's all Drongo should be doing. Garrisoning into his buildings and he should be okay because um, these camel numbers will dwindle. We are seeing that these men at arms are going to be able to take out a couple of those villages finally over there. But uh, just sending units in one at a time here for Drongo is not going to work. And maybe bringing, him, bringing these camel, uh, camel archers closer to the uh, to the 
the Barbarican of the Sun would be good because it does get the extra, that does do 26 damage to them, and they've only got what 210 HP, so we'll, we'll do a lot of damage. And we are seeing these uh, Camel Archers now starting to get taken down by the Palace Guards who are chasing him, but we are seeing the uh, Student Scoop Micro coming back in yet again. Drogon needs to stop chasing this now, pull back and, and regroup here. We see the, a cheeky raid coming in onto these wood villagers over here as the Camel Arch is doing some nice stuff as well. But still pumping these units out, getting those Archie. You need to get the Archer mass, the, the ball of Archers out. Population 80 for Drongo to 77 for the Chapster. So still very, very close. Uh, in terms of the population, we are seeing these archers going to be trying to snipe some of the camel archers as as Chapster pulling back. Still no siege just yet for Drongo. Uh, you've got to get siege against full archers. It's uh, maybe something that will get learned a little bit later in... Um, in this game's life cycle, but Siege is uh, incredibly good. Nice micro here from Drongo, pulling back the men-at-arms, allowing those uh, those archers to get the damage done. You just have to keep going here with that. How are the armory upgrades here looking for these players? Chapster getting his uh, his wedge rivets here, going, coming up to uh, his two, two, uh, two wedge rivets, whereas Drongo, if we check out that, that already, Drongo's got, uh, already has... His second tier of uh, of ranged armor, his second tier of melee armor. He just needs to start working on that uh, that that actual damage armor, and he'll start winning these fights much harder. We are seeing that the um, the the numbers right now for Drongo are starting to look very very nice, but he's not using utilizing his palace guards here. The guard the palace guards defend the the uh, the damage. These are the, these archers are the damage dealers. The palace guards. They're just the damage soaking. Let him micro away. Let him spend all that time microing those units. Just run forward and back with your palace guards for all I care. Let the keep the archers alive. Because if you look at the damage that an archer does, it does eight bow damage, and the camel archer here does fourteen bow damage. So there's a huge advantage in the camel archers. So you just need to make sure that they're dealing that big bonus damage there to the. Uh, the, the palace guards instead of your archers. We are seeing a monk out right now for Drongo to heal up his units. Very, very smart, actually, to get this to happen here. We see the monk grabbing the uh, relic here, trying to bring that one back into the uh, the temple to drop that one off. But this monk now, ooh, going to be a little bit careful with him. Don't want to run that one in and lose that one. We see more buildings getting thrown up now for the Chapster. We are seeing the, uh, the palace guards trying to do that thing. We see some more units getting picked off here. And uh, Aussie Drongo... Retreating back for the time being. See some more units pumping out of this archery range here. As a chapster saying, look, I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to chill for a little bit. He's got three town centers right now. Does Drongo have a second town center? Drongo does not have a second town center. He's one town center for life. That's what Drongo is. One town center for life. We see another keep coming up for Chapster. He's got so many more resources than Drongo here. He can just throw this keep up in the middle of the map, take control of this sacred site, potentially here. See lots of population here for Drongo, but Chapster's now taken over the population lead. Has these super strong units here. I'm surprised we didn't see any camel uh, camel knights, basically, or even just some knights in general, making those lances here against this army comp. What is kind of a no-brainer to me, but who knows? And we see the keep is up now, and Drongo just notices that it looks like. As we see, he's going to be getting that damage taken. He did not have line of sight of the keep coming up here. And he's in a very, very difficult situation here. He does have uh, the 100 gold per minute relic in his temple, or his, is that what it's called? Monastery? In his monastery. And we'll see how this is going to go. And now we've got the Manganel that Drongo should have been making from the get-go here. Imagine imagine a Manganel instead of those battering rams, for example. Could have been a completely different game here. But now the Manganel going to move in. You have to go into spread formation against the Manganel. We see these uh, Camel Archers, veteran Camel Archers coming in here. Very, very strong. We've got the veteran Archers as well. But boom! Huge damage there onto the archers here. You cannot dodge the... I'm pretty sure you can't dodge the damage on the specific archer when the Manganel fires, but you can definitely split the archers up uh, utilizing the staggered formation um, uh, little ability here. Let me see the Manganels 
pushing forward here for uh, Chapster as Ozzy Drongo trying to maintain this high ground. Meanwhile, we've got the raid coming in for Chapster, hitting the villages of Ozzy Drongo. He's got no real way to defend against these uh, Camel Archer raids now. These villages get absolutely destroyed as, uh, as they push in here. You can see the Maganel getting some damage done. Boom, big damage. He does have these monsters, these monks here to help heal his units up, but it's looking like too much damage coming in onto Ozzy Drongo here. He does have the sacred site down the bottom of the map grabbed. I'm pretty sure this gives you extra gold per minute. The captured site uh, periodically generates gold for the player that controls it. We are seeing Drongo making a move in here, trying to get some damage done underneath the keep, lowering the numbers of these camel archers. But while this is all going on, the camel archers of Chaps are kind of getting dealt with by the bar barbar. I can't, sp can't speak. Barbican of the sun, but Aussie Drongo gets taken out, decides to tap out yet again, realizing that three town center Abbasid dynasty may be just too much for the one town center of Chinese to to really work here. And Chapster takes the win. Aussie Drongo, unfortunately, the uh, the theory crafting not quite coming through in this game, uh, but a super entertaining game nonetheless. And you can definitely see that this strap from Aussie Drongo and the last game would have worked if there was Mangonels involved. If he built Mangonels, if he just got one siege uh, siege workshop, whatever it's called, start, made one Mangonel, then the pure archers of his opponent just doesn't work anymore. You can't shoot and scoot because you just take a ton of damage from the Mangonel. Slow push forward, get the battering rams out, push inside of the battering ram so he can't shoot and scoot you back to his base. And then you can just take the dub and say GG. Um, super interesting here uh, that the full archer comp here from Chap Chapster does take the win. And if you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.